What's up guys? Coach King James here with Copper Moves Fitness. Today's segment is called Runner's Recovery. I have six ways on how to optimize your health and longevity in running. Hey guys, um, so with anything fitness related, we're always about recovery because the, the better you can recover, the longer you can train and the more days you can train. Uh, so the most common injuries that are associated with running are usually at the knee and usually at the calf and uh, ankle complex. Um, so we're gonna go over those two things on how to recover those and being able to actually run possibly the next day or the day after. Again, pain free is what we're going for, so check it out. All right guys, so the first two tools that we're gonna use are a foam roller um, and anything like a tennis ball, lacrosse ball, or um, golf ball. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna hit the feet. Check out the poop socks, they're glorious. Um, so we're gonna roll our feet first because that's the main thing that comes in contact with the floor over and over again, especially on concrete when you're running on concrete, things like that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tennis ball um, or lacrosse ball. I actually recommend a lacrosse ball because again, your feet are very dense musculature in there. So we gotta have something that can actually dig into those muscle groups. So sometimes a tennis ball might not be ideal, but this is what we have for now. Um, so the first thing you're gonna roll is the middle of your foot. So it's across your foot, kind of below where your toes are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step on the ball and think about smearing the ball across um, your foot. So back and forth, do it very slow. Do this for about a minute or so. You can really dig, put a lot of uh, weight pressure on the, on the ball, whatever type of ball you're using, and just kind of go back and forth, digging into those muscles. Because again, if you suffer from plantar fasciitis or if you have flat feet and you're running, that's causing a lot of damage and we need to actually um, release the muscles in your feet. So this is one way to do it. And once you're done with that, <clears throat> now I want you guys to go to the side of the foot. So this kind of lateral side of the foot, it's gonna be inside. Um, so we're gonna roll this as well. Especially if you have plantar fasciitis, I recommend rolling the sides of your feet the most because they actually do connect into your ankle um, and actually into your Achilles tendon as well. So we don't want any Achilles tears or anything like that. So this is a great way to kind of recover your feet. And then obviously last, we're gonna go to the outside of the foot. <clears throat> it's not as important as the, the middle foot or the inside, but we still got to roll it anyway, um, just for <coughs> uh, precaution. So once you spend about two or three minutes hitting all three of those parts, then we're gonna move on to the next part, which is our calves. So the next piece that we're gonna hit is our calves, our ankles. Um, the main thing with those and why we're doing this, because everyone usually gets shin splints. Yes, you've heard about shin splints before. They're so painful. Um, so I'm gonna teach you guys how to actually recover from shin splints. Now, most of it actually comes from um, what's called your anterior tibialis, which is this nice lateral muscle that kind of runs along the front part of your leg. Um, it's also associated with your calf muscle. So if your calves are tight, your ankles are tight, that muscle will usually get um, very inactive and um, weak. So it gets fatigued really fast. And that's where you find the shin splint. So the first thing is we're gonna roll the middle part of our calf, which is our gastroc, which is the big meaty part right there. So I'm just gonna put the ball on the gastroc and you're gonna do slow, very small circles until you find any of those kind of pain spots. And once you find that little crunchy kind of knot in your calf, I just want you to kind of to hold there and maybe 30, 40 seconds until you kind of feel some kind of release. Again, you're just making very small circles back and forth. And if you're not feeling anything there, that's totally fine. Maybe that muscle group is not, um, maybe it's firing uh, appropriately how it's supposed to. So now we're gonna go hit the outside of the calf. Um, this is called your, uh, your, your uh, peroneals, sorry. Your peroneals, um, so it's gonna be the outside of your calf. Again, you're gonna use the ball. You're gonna roll up and down until you kind of find that spot. And once you find that spot, I want you to flex and extend your toe. So it's kind of simulating active motion like as you're running. Um, so it's getting all those muscle groups involved. But again, we're pinning the muscle down with the, the, the lacrosse ball or the tennis ball, whatever you're using as we're doing this. <clears throat> And then once you kind of, that area loosens up, we'll go to the inside of the calf, um, which is your soleus. And we're gonna roll that as well. Again, we're hitting all three points of the calf just to make sure everything's efficiently moving properly um, and everything's nice and loose. And once we're there, again, once you're done with rolling your calves, I recommend spending maybe about two to three minutes on your calf alone. Now we're actually gonna hit the anterior tibialis. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into a 90-90 stance, which means this front leg is gonna be 90 degrees, this back leg is gonna be 90 degrees. Now, the anterior tibialis runs laterally, 
across the front of your leg. So you're gonna put the ball right there and you're gonna put some forward pressure and I kind of want you moving your foot side to side, back and forth, and roll on that muscle. And this is really gonna hurt if you tend to suffer from a lot of shin splints. So we're just gonna roll it out as much as we can. Again, it's not about going fast on this. You need to do very slow kind of passes as you're going. Again, you're going across, okay? So don't go towards the middle because then that's your shin bone. We want to stay laterally on the side as we're doing this. So again, spend about a minute or two on here, just depending on how tight you are. Um, then obviously you're going to go to the other side. All right, and this last piece we're going to roll. If you have a foam roller at, at home, I recommend getting one. But if you do have a foam roller at home, um, the main pieces we're going to roll next are our quads and our IT bands. Again, with running, it's very anterior dominant, which means it's very front dominant. So any muscles associated with the front side of your body, like your quads, knees, and things like that, it's going to be associated with that. So we're going to roll our quads first. Um, so what you're going to do is we're going to roll one at a time. So go on the edge of the foam roller. You're going to put your quad on the foam roller. Now you need that leg bent at 90 degrees the entire time. And what I want you to do is roll from the top of your hip all the way to the top of your knee. Again, keeping that leg bent the entire time. <clears throat> You're gonna roll back and forth nice and slow. Again, this might be painful for some, if you, especially if you do a lot of quad uh, dominant work, um, like squats or you do a lot of running, things like that. This is really gonna help loosen up those quads um, and also take a lot of pressure off the knee and hip as well. So you're just gonna roll back and forth, again, nice and slow, all the way from the top of the hip and then to the top of the knee. And then from here, we're gonna transition into our IT band. The IT band um, attaches into the knee. So if you do have a lot of knee problems, um, the IT band's probably very tight as well. So the IT band, just the lateral side of the leg. So again, start from the top of your hip. You're gonna roll all the way down to the top of your knee. You're gonna roll up and down, back and forth. Put a lot of body weight pressure on this as well because the IT band's a really um, thick um, band of muscle. Um, so you're gonna, even if you need more pressure, just go down to your elbow and you're just gonna roll nice and slow up and down, up and down again. Once you find that spot where it really starts hurting, kind of rock side to side, back and forth to get more active motion into it. And then once it finally releases, then you can go to the other side or keep searching for any of those, um, any of those sore muscle groups. And then after you're done with that, <clears throat> I'm gonna take one shoe off because I don't want one shoe with that other shoe. We're gonna go into our stretches. So the first one is we're gonna actually um, stretch out our calves. So we're gonna go into a split stance. So what we're trying to achieve with this um, next stretch is we're trying to get a dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, which are the two ranges of motion of the foot. Um, getting those muscles kind of firing, getting, the, getting that range back in with both sides. So uh, what dorsiflexion is, is when I flex my toe towards my shin bone. And what plantar flexion is, is when I point my toe down. So it's kind of simulating as you're running, you're getting those two ranges of motion down as you're doing it. So I'm gonna go into a split stance. I'm gonna start up with my, my heel off the ground and you're gonna sink that back leg and you're gonna hold. So this is plantar flexion right here, okay? Then once you come up again, I want you dropping the heel down. Now we're gonna go into dorsiflexion. I'm still bending that back leg. It's a very slight movement, so I start straight and then bend slightly. So I'm still getting that dorsiflexion. And you should feel this in the front of your uh, shin as well. So that's your anterior tibialis firing as well. And then you can alternate between these two motions back and forth. Again, just getting those ankles nice and loose, getting some of that anterior tibialis firing as we're going. And you can do it for a couple rounds, do it on each side as well. And then the last stretch for today is we're gonna do a hip stretch. So it's called a, a sprinter's uh, lunge. So you're gonna get into a split stance. You're gonna plant your feet. So it's getting all your hip flexors nice and stretched. It's almost getting your hamstring stretched as well. And then what I want you to do is you're gonna rotate from the inside hand, just stretching your upper back. Then you can alternate each side. So that back leg is nice and straight. You plant the hands, you're sinking into that hip and then you're gonna rotate all the way towards the sky. Again, do this for a few rounds. And again, um, you can alternate between both stretches before you run or even after you run. Um, and that's it, guys. So again, we're gonna roll first, and then we're gonna stretch. I recommend doing this before and after a long run. And then, again, we're all about longevity here. We're all about safety, about being recovered. So again, we train smart and we train hard. You guys, have a good day.